a correctional facility employee's budding friendship with the newly hired psychologist takes an unexpected turn. By the beach, Eileen Dunlop sits in her car when she notices the couple kissing in the vehicle in front of her. As she watches the pair lay in the back seat to make love, the woman opens her door, grabs a handful of snow, and shoves it down her skirt to keep her impure thoughts at bay. Later, while Eileen drives home, the car's engine smoke leaks into the passenger compartment, so she keeps the window open to avoid suffocating from the noxious gas. Inside the house, the woman places new bottles of alcohol next to her father and takes the empty ones. In her bedroom, she places her money in a tin container before lying in bed and binge eating chocolates. The next day, Eileen arrives at the correctional facility for teenagers where she works. From the office window, she looks down and curiously observes one inmate, Lee Polk. Suddenly, her co-worker Mrs. Murray orders her to retrieve some forms, and the older woman remarks that Eileen's useless in the workplace. Later, the woman pats down the visiting family members for any prohibited items before allowing them to see the inmates. From her desk, Eileen sees Randy, a guard, and fantasizes about the man making love to her against the glass partition. That afternoon, the other employees toast to the retiring psychologist, Dr. Fry, who hopes the inmates take kindly to his replacement. Before heading home, the woman drops by the liquor store to buy two bottles for her father. When she drives up to the house, she sees her inebriated father, Jim, waving around a handgun while Officer Buck tries to calm him down. Eileen takes her father back into the house and reminds the former police chief that he isn't a cop anymore. When the daughter removes the man's shoes, he comments that she smells awful, prompting the woman to state that he needs to be nicer to her because she's the only person willing to put up with him. Jim says he doesn't care because he still has his other daughter, Joni, but Eileen reminds him that her sister doesn't want to talk to him. To keep Jim from stepping out of the house, the woman takes all his shoes and places them in the trunk of her car. The next day, she looks down at Lee as he stands in his usual spot in the yard. While taking out the trash, Eileen sees a stylish woman step out of a red car in the parking lot. Later, the warden introduces the mystery woman as Dr. Rebecca St. John, the new prison psychologist. From the back of the room, the enamored Eileen stares at the beautiful woman who smiles at her. After the meeting, the psychologist introduces herself to the meek woman and asks where she can freshen up. Eileen takes her to the locker room, where she secretly sniffs Rebecca's coat. The doctor learns that they both share the same indifference to what's popular and what other people think. The older woman says it's refreshing to meet someone who thinks similarly. During the Christmas pageant, Eileen watches the psychologist as she saunters into the auditorium. Suddenly, a guard beats up an unruly inmate in the audience, and then a fight breaks out between two cast members on stage. While the guards try to restore order, Rebecca slinks out of the auditorium, fearing for her safety. At the liquor store, Eileen purchases the usual bottles for her father and a box of smokes. At home, she lights a smoke on the stove, and Jim remarks that she looks funny holding the cigarette. Then, the father mentions Lee Polk, the inmate who stabbed his policeman father in his sleep. He says the teen never denied the crime or uttered a word during the trial. Jim says he considers Lee's act as psychopathic, and he can't believe a son killed his father that way. The man adds that he can't imagine Eileen doing anything like that because he can't see her holding a knife. The woman asks if he can imagine her wielding a gun, and he says yes. However, he adds that if it were to happen, it'd be when he's dead and she has nobody else in the world. A certainty he guarantees. The next day, Eileen curiously peers into Lee Polk's cell while he is lying on the cot. Later, the woman snoops through his file folder and looks at the crime scene photos. When the door creaks open, she drops the folder's contents on the floor, and Rebecca comes over to help. The psychologist sees that Eileen was rifling through Polk's file, so the latter lies and says she was doing some filing. The woman mentions she's never been inside the psychologist's office, so Rebecca says she should come by sometime. The next day, Eileen doesn't see Lee standing outside the break room window like usual. Later, Anne, Lee's mother, arrives at the visitor's area Area and explains that she was called to see her son. Suddenly, the psychologist introduces herself to Anne and thanks her for coming on short notice. Through the glass partition, Eileen watches as the mother grows increasingly upset when the smiling Lee refuses to speak to her. Moments later, the distraught woman exits the room and says she doesn't care what the institution plans to do with her son. Then, the psychologist asks the inmate if he'd like to continue their conversation in her office, and he nods. When Randy says he needs to cuff the teen, Rebecca tells the guard it won't be necessary. After the pair leaves, Randy mocks the doctor for treating the inmate with kindness, stating to Eileen that Lee killed a cop. 
However, the woman corrects him and says that he killed his father, adding that there's a difference. Later, Eileen drops by the psychologist's office to return the notebook she left in the visiting area. Before she leaves, Rebecca asks the woman if she'd like to join her for drinks tonight, and they agree to meet at the lone bar in town at 7 o'clock. At home, Eileen prepares by shaving her legs and wearing one of her mother's fancy dresses. That evening, they enjoy drinks by the bar and the woman shares that she has to drive with the windows down because the malfunctioning car fills up with smoke. The sympathetic Rebecca touches the flustered Eileen's leg and asks why her husband hasn't gotten the vehicle fixed. The woman says she isn't married, prompting the psychologist to share that she's always been single. She adds that if she does date a man, the relationship is often brief. Then, the older woman asks how long she's worked at the prison, and Eileen says the job was supposed to be temporary while she moved home to care for her dying mother, but now she's been there for three or four years. Rebecca says she's an orphan, and her uncle raised her out west. She admits that even though she misses the sunshine, she has a love-hate relationship with dreary New England and its long winters. Seconds later, the psychologist asks if Eileen thinks Ann Polk was an angry woman, and the latter says she didn't seem angrier than most locals. Then, Rebecca mentions how her old professor at Harvard performed a study on inmates with psychedelics. She disagrees with the man's methods because she doesn't think there's a magical cure-all pill. However, she does believe that it's possible to set violent offenders free if you get them to tell and feel the truth. Suddenly, three men from across the bar attempt to flirt with the women. So the psychologist introduces herself as Eileen and her companion as Rebecca. Moments later, an upbeat song begins playing. So the doctor asks the woman if she'd like to dance, much to the men's confusion. By the jukebox, the women begin dancing, and Rebecca's touches excite the shy Eileen. When a slow song plays, the women hold each other close, but a drunk man attempts to cut into the pair. Annoyed by his unwanted advances, the psychologist elbows his face and shoves him to the ground. Then, she holds out her hand to Eileen, and they continue to slow dance. Outside the bar, Rebecca kisses the woman gently, leaving her speechless. After the psychologist drives away, the giddy Eileen returns inside, orders a drink, and smokes Rebecca's half-burnt cigarette. The following day, the hungover woman wakes up lying on her sick in the front seat of her car. When she tries to start the vehicle, she realizes the keys are missing. She rolls out of the car and sees that her father opened the trunk and retrieved his shoes. Eileen tries to open the window, but Jim pretends not to hear her when she asks him to let her in. Eventually, she finds an unlocked window and crawls through. She asks her father for the car keys, but he refuses to hand them over. From the second floor landing, Jim tosses a copy of Oliver Twist and says she can't get the keys until she reads the book cover to cover. He admonishes her for staying out all night and throwing up in the car. He adds that she has no shame wearing the dress her mother wore to his father's funeral, and he doesn't believe her excuse that she went out with a female co-worker. Then, Jim says she can't go to work in the outfit she wore last night because she doesn't want people to see her dressed like that. Later, Eileen cleans the the car seat when Officer Buck appears to speak to her. The cop explains that he received complaints from neighbors yesterday about her father pointing his gun through the window at some kids. Buck says that her father agreed to relinquish the weapon to the daughter as long as she doesn't use it on him. Inside, Jim hands the gun to the cop who gives it to Eileen. Then, the woman imagines using the weapon on herself. At the prison, Eileen learns that the psychologist won't return until after Christmas, much to her disappointment. So she leaves, reasoning that she's ill but sneaks into Rebecca's office, where she lays her head on the desk. The woman dreams of staying inside her car as it fills with thick white smoke, and then she wakes up from the nightmare. That evening, Eileen finds her father at the bottom of the attic stairs, seemingly injured after a nasty fall. So the woman drives Jim to the hospital and on the way there, the groggy man mistakes her for his other daughter and touches her leg inappropriately. Later, the doctor informs the woman that they stitched her father's cut, and that he doesn't think there's a concussion. However, the older man says he's concerned about Jim's alcoholism and warns Eileen that she might lose her father if she condones his drinking. At home, the woman helps her father to bed, but the man refuses to sleep in the bedroom, believing it to be haunted. He says he'd like to have a drink downstairs and sleep on the couch like always. 
place. In the living room, Jim notes that the coat his daughter's wearing is the one he bought his late wife after her release from the mental asylum. He knows people thought his brash personality was to blame for his wife's illness, but he believes he truly loved her. Then, he remarks that Eileen will never know the love he and her mother shared, adding that she's just like a bit player in a movie and that she'll never be relevant enough to be a main character. Days later, the woman imagines finally shooting her father in the head with his weapon. While in the bath, Jim calls out that a woman's on the phone looking for her. She answers the call and realizes it's Rebecca asking if she'd like to spend Christmas Eve at her house. That evening, Eileen arrives at the address the psychologist gave her. When the doctor answers the door, she is wrestling with her aggressive cat whom she sets free in the front yard. Rebecca apologizes for the messy state of her household, and when the phone rings, she lifts the receiver and places it back, ignoring the call. Unable to find the corkscrew to open the bottle of wine her guest brought, the psychologist decides to try a trick she learned from a fellow student. She takes her shoe, places the bottle inside, and slams the object against the wall until the cork pops off. As they drink the cheap wine, Eileen asks the doctor if she has any roommates. Rebecca says she doesn't because she likes having the freedom of making as much noise as she'd like without the neighbors hearing. Then she lets out a scream, bemusing the guest. Seconds later, the psychologist says she's a lousy host since she hasn't prepared any food. While she checks the fridge for food, Eileen heads to the upstairs bathroom to gather herself. In front of the mirror, the nervous woman finds a bar of soap with a curly strand of dark hair on it. As she returns to the kitchen, she laughs when she sees the block of cheese and pickles Rebecca set out for her to eat. Being polite, Eileen takes little bites of the prepared food as the doctor rants about the warden's strict rules in the prison. Moments later, the psychologist joins the woman at the table and remarks that she and the guest share certain beliefs. The meek woman thinks Rebecca is about to note their mutual attraction to each other, but the doctor mentions Lee Polk, which catches her off guard. The older woman asks what she thinks drove the teen to kill his father, and Eileen says everybody wants to kill their father. Rebecca disagrees and recounts how Lee hacked through his father's throat with an old kitchen knife before stabbing him in the chest repeatedly, and told the cops she thought there was a break-in. But the doctor doesn't believe she slept through the ghastly crime as she claimed. The psychologist admits she asked Lee what his father did to him that caused the violent act. She says the inmate told her everything in a matter of minutes because no one thought to ask him before. Then, Rebecca asks Eileen to promise not to tell anyone what Lee told her. The woman swears she won't, so the doctor takes her hand, kisses it, and reveals that they are currently in the Polk's house and Anne's tied up in the basement. The shocked woman stands to leave, but the psychologist blocks the door. Eileen says she thought the doctor invited her because she liked her. Rebecca says she does, but that what she needs most right now is a friend. The older woman explains she came to the house yesterday afternoon to speak to Anne, and told her what Lee said regarding the abuse he suffered at the hands of her late husband. The mother didn't take too kindly to the accusations, so the psychologist left her card and returned home. However, she couldn't sleep last night, so she drove back this morning and confronted Anne about how she was complicit in her husband's deplorable acts. Rebecca says they got into a tussle and ended up tumbling down the basement stairs. She thought the inmate's mother would kill her, so she tied her up. She claims Anne kept screaming that she'd go to jail because her late husband was a cop, so the doctor gave her sedatives she found in the bathroom to calm her down. Because she didn't know what else to do, she called Eileen to possibly convince her to be a secondary witness to Anne's confession. Eventually, Eileen agrees to the plan, and she grabs her father's handgun from the car. In the basement, Rebecca asks the tied-up woman to tell her why she allowed her husband to abuse their son, and promises to let her go and heal her family if she cooperates. Anne nods, but when the doctor removes the gag over her mouth, the woman cusses her out and says she's going to jail for what she did. Suddenly, Eileen reveals herself and says that if she doesn't talk, they leave her to starve and die in the basement. Scoffing at the meek woman's threats, Anne berates her and says everybody knows her father's a womanizing drunk. So Eileen brandishes the weapon and threatens to end the woman's life if she continues to be difficult. Finally, Anne admits she was initially unaware of her husband's inappropriate behavior toward their son, but she eventually found out after walking in on it one night. She says she didn't know how to stop it, but her husband's renewed interest in her the more she condoned the abuse caused her to actively participate in preparing Lee every night for the awful things that were about to happen. 
Anne says her husband finally began treating her like he did when they were young and in love, and adds that Eileen won't understand how she feels because she's never had her heart broken. Suddenly, the woman pulls the trigger, hitting Anne's shoulder. As the hysterical woman cries in pain, the shock doctor tells Eileen to help her feed Anne a handful of sedatives to knock her out. The distraught psychologist asks the woman why she shot Anne, and she says she was upset. Rebecca asks what they're supposed to do, and Eileen says they can take the woman to her house where they'll make it appear as though her inebriated father shot her. Then she says they can run away to New York together. Eileen tells the doctor that she loves her and assures everything's gonna be okay. Outside, Rebecca instructs the woman to take Anne to her house and says she'll be there after she finishes cleaning up the evidence. However, the psychologist doesn't show up, and when Jim asks where she is going, the daughter says she might go on the road. As the sun rises, Eileen drops drives to the forest, where she leaves the intoxicated woman inside the car as it fills up with white smoke. Later, the woman returns to the main road, hitches a ride on a truck, and smiles as she finally skips town. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.